There have been many questions on social media about safe isolation tests, with particular questions about the voltages to be expected, and the differences when testing single phase and three phase boards for safe isolation before starting work. And one that is often asked, what will reverse polarity voltages be like? Many of you will already carry out safe isolation on a regular basis. But for those that are new to the trade, we should always use an approved voltage tester or the AC range of your test meter. A proving unit can be used to prove that your tester is functioning correctly. But there are other ways to do this. Safe isolation, testing for dead, must be taken seriously. The wrong test equipment can put you or your colleagues in danger. One common device that many tradespeople think will prove a circuit is safe is the voltage detector pen. These non-contact detector pens and the voltage detector screwdrivers are not recommended for safe isolation checks. They will not always show when a voltage is present. If you don't have a proving unit with you, you can always use the incoming supply to prove your test meter. The incoming or feed side of the main switch will always be live, assuming the cutout fuse is still in place. On a standard consumer unit, this incoming supply will be the top two terminals of the main switch for line and neutral, and the earth bar for the main earth connection. Remember, these are live tests, so take suitable precautions. The safe isolation procedure shown below is the minimum that you should be doing. On some industrial sites, you may have to complete a permit to work form or you may be provided with one. For a domestic setting, start with asking permission from the customer to turn off the power. The customer must expect some disruption. After all, they've asked you to visit to carry out their work. Identify the circuit to be isolated and then lock off the circuit and apply a warning label. Prove the test equipment is functioning correctly and then carry out safe isolation voltage checks to prove that the circuit is dead. Reprove that the test equipment is still working and then commence the work activity. It cannot be stressed enough that you should always retest for dead if returning to the circuit after a break or interval. Never assume that all is still dead. You don't know if someone has turned the power back on or bypassed your lock, and it does happen. There are always lots of questions about the actual voltages that will be measured, so the rest of this video will concentrate on the voltage checks. Questions such as, what voltages should I expect to measure on a dead circuit? And in fact, what voltages should I expect to measure on a live circuit? What will the voltages be in a house? And what about measuring three-phase voltages? Let's look at these, and we can begin with a single-phase consumer unit that is to be voltage tested at the main switch. This is the main switch, and in most domestic consumer units, the live feed, the incoming feed or supply, will enter the top of the switch. This part of the switch, the top two terminals, will always be live. The bottom two terminals are on the consumer side of the switch and these are switched on or off by the switch. One terminal is connected to the bus bar for the circuit breakers and the other terminal is connected to the neutral bar. The main earth will go directly to the earth bar without being switched. Where are we testing? We will voltage test for dead or isolated at the bottom terminals, those on the switched side of the switch. Even though we might be testing for dead, testing for no voltage, we should treat these as live tests and take suitable precautions for the safety of ourselves and others. Here, you might be measuring the line to neutral and you will be close to potentially live parts. Is the bus bar covered with a plastic sleeve? Are there exposed connections where breakers are missing? And so on. Measuring line to earth still requires you to be close to the bus bar, which may or may not be covered. 
and testing neutral to earth is the last of the three tests on the single phase consumer unit. What voltages should we expect in a consumer unit that has not been isolated? What would the normal working voltages be? We will use the nominal voltage of 230 volts AC in this video, as per the regulations. In practice, the actual voltage that you measure will be anything from about 220 volts to 240 volts or so, but we still call this 230 volts nominal. Nominal just means the name that we call it, nominal name. I've numbered the main switch terminals for ease of understanding, but most main switches will not be numbered. With the main switch on, the voltage can pass through the switch. I always start by measuring to earth first. I know that earth is a known zero point. Measuring the voltage between line to earth, or using the numbers, terminal 2 to the earth bar will give us 230 volts AC nominal. Between line and neutral, terminal 2 to terminal 4 will also show 230 volts, as we would expect, as the installation is not yet isolated. And then we can voltage test between neutral and earth either between terminal 4 and the earth bar on this picture, or between the neutral bar and the earth bar. This should give us zero volts, as they are the same point electrically. Depending on the earthing system in use, there may be one or two volts between neutral and earth. Nothing to worry about. Now we can turn the main switch off and isolate the installation. The intention of safe isolation is to remove the installation from all sources of electrical energy. With the main switch off, we want to prove isolation, so carry out the voltage checks again. What should we expect? Line to earth is zero, line to neutral is zero, and neutral to earth is also zero. All three possible combinations are zero volts. The installation is isolated. The installation after the main switch is isolated, but the top half of the switch is still live. The incoming mains tails are still live unless the cutout fuse has been removed. Although the installation is dead, there is still live electricity at certain points inside the consumer unit. And these two tables should act as a refresher of the voltages to be expected when comparing an installation that is not isolated to one that is isolated. And if we test a three-phase distribution board at the main switch, what should we expect when we test it? Here is the main switch to a three-phase board in the on position, not yet isolated, so these are live checks. In this drawing, we are switching three phases plus neutral, with the main earth going directly to the earth bar. You will also come across three phase only switches, where only L1, L2 and L3 are switched, the neutral going directly to the neutral bar. Look at the voltage chart on here. There are now 10 voltage checks to make, but they take only seconds. Work to a method and you will not miss any test out. I always start with the earth. Earth to L1, earth to L2, earth to L3, and earth to neutral. That is all possible combinations of checks to earth, and we can now move on without testing the earth again. Now test combinations to neutral. Neutral to L1, to L2, and to L3. That's it. We've already tested the earth. Now clear L1 by testing L1 to L2, and L1 to L3. Finally, we have the last test, L2, to L3, and that is all 10 voltage tests done. Any phase, L1, L2, L3, to earth or to neutral, is 230 volts. Any phase to phase, such as L1 to L3, is 400 volts. If we turn the main switch off, what happens to the voltages? Remember, we are testing at the consumer side of the switch. In this drawing, 
we are placing our test probes in the top row of terminals plus the earth bar. With an isolated installation, all 10 voltage checks will return 0 volts. Make sure that you are testing on the consumer side, the switch side of the main switch. The incoming feed or supply will always be live at 230 volts or 400 volts. A comparison of the two voltage charts side by side is given here. With the main switch off, all voltage checks will be zero volts and we can consider the installation isolated. Always remember to retest your meter for correct function after safe isolation checks. If a probe has become disconnected, you'll read zero volts even on a live circuit. It does happen and you need to know. It's your safety on the line. What about reverse polarity? How can we identify a reverse polarity installation or circuit? With reverse polarity, most devices and appliances will still work, but the safety of the user is compromised. Let's look. Shown on the drawing, the incoming meter tails have been reversed in the main switch. What effect will this have on voltage checks? And this time, we will test at the circuit breaker or MCB. With the MCB switched on, we can test between the top terminal and earth to get zero volts. This should be our first warning sign that something is wrong. Line to earth should be 230 volts on the live circuit. Between the MCB line terminal and the neutral bar, we have 230 volts, which appears to be correct. And then, between neutral and earth, is 230 volts again, which is definitely not right. It should be zero. If we'd only checked line to neutral, we would not have picked up this fault. The circuit, or in this case the installation, is unsafe, and the user could be in danger of electric shock. The neutral bar is actually at 230 volts, and the bus bar has become neutral. This situation must be corrected. We cannot proceed any further with our work or sign the job off until this reverse polarity has been put right. Let's continue with our reverse polarity scenario and now we will turn the MCB or circuit breaker off. Carry out the same tests. From the top MCB terminal to earth is zero volts, which is what we would expect for an isolated circuit. Test the MCB to the neutral bar and we have zero volts and again what we would expect. Finally then, test earth to neutral and there is our fault indication. We have 230 volts between neutral and earth when we know that we should have zero volts. This circuit is not safe, it is not isolated. Can you see the positive logic in making all three tests here. A lot of electricians and DIYers will just test line to neutral and because the meter shows zero volts they will declare the circuit safe to work on. As you can see here it is definitely not safe and it is you that will be putting your hands inside the consumer unit. You with your test meter can identify the problem but the user with no meter will think that turning the MCB off is enough, and no, it's not. So, it's up to us to correct the problem if we see it. Look at the difference now if we turn the main switch off. How will this affect our voltage readings? With the main switch in the on position, the three-step voltage checks will quickly show that there are safety problems. Look at the voltage chart on the left. Neutral to earth should never be 230 volts. Now what happens if we have a reversed polarity installation and we turn the main switch off? All the tests on the consumer side of the main switch show zero volts. The installation is isolated. This is why the consumer, the user, should always be encouraged to turn off at the main switch before attempting any DIY work the circuit 
the installation will be dead. Unfortunately, when the user turns the main switch on again, the reverse polarity will still be present. One very good reason why periodic inspection and tests should be carried out, so that an electrical professional can identify the problem and correct it. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Understanding what the voltages should be at various points is so very important to your safety and to the user's safety. Never compromise and never skip these quick and easy checks. They do save lives. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.